Hello and welcome back to the Telltale Podcast and another video interview. If you're watching this on YouTube, there will be a podcast version of this episode uploaded on Spotify and Google Podcasts or wherever else you get your podcasts. And today's guest is the lovely Olivia Deeble, who has been on the podcast before, where we talked all about her acting career and she shared some personal stories and advice. If you're interested in listening to that episode, I will link it in the description of this video. But today we're here to talk all about Olivia's new project, More Than This, and I want to just Thank you, Olivia, again for joining me today. Pleasure. I loved it too much the first time. I had to. Come yes. Back. Yes. And I remember <laughs> you were like, at the end, I have this project I'm working on. Might have to come back. So I had to kind of jump on that opportunity. So thank you again. <laughs> but, you know, before we get into more than this, which is, is going to be the crux of this kind of interview, um, which we'll get to in a second, but what's been going on in the life of Olivia Diebel so far? You know, do we have any new hobbies, passions, interests, and have there been incredible kind of life lessons learned in the past few months? Yeah, absolutely there has been. So I think after we spoke, I'd actually just wrapped up filming for uh, mm. for more than this and didn't know what, like it was a big relief to have, have, to have written it and then have it made, but I didn't know where it was gonna go. It didn't have a home yet, or I didn't have the certainty of where that was gonna go. Yeah. And then we kind of were still spiked by lockdowns and stuff. And I definitely recognized that my mental health wasn't bad, but I needed to do a little bit more work on myself and acknowledge why I feel something some way or why my behavioral habits may lead to con- some destructive behavior. and you know thinking or just like figuring out like being an adult and going okay what's a trigger for me what can I avoid to kind of move forward and be a better well-rounded person so I definitely did like a lot of internal reflecting um I moved into an apartment which was really exciting and I moved in with friends and that's been really awesome like living with them um yeah and then just also getting back into auditioning we finally COVID's kind of lifted so like auditions are back open and, and training that side of my brain again has been quite yeah. tricky but also really good um yeah and just getting ready for this show to be released which is really yeah. really and you know that transition into adulthood that's kind of come over for you are you are you coping with it well are they is it kind of difficult or are you enjoying the whole process I just- I didn't, I'm loving the whole process. I didn't realize how difficult I'd actually find it, I think, because there was always that pressure for me to be an adult from such a young age. But it was instead of me playing up, it's actually having to sit in my mistakes and take acknowledgement and have to do the mundane crap stuff of being a a young woman. Um, And like, you know, paying bills isn't fun. (laughs) Shopping isn't fun. But, you know, those are the really exciting enjoyment things that give us the autonomy over our decisions and body that I've also really been enjoying. Um, but yeah, it's, it's tricky. It's tricky. You know, you, you always have really big developmental stages and, and being an early adult is another one of them and realising the kind of person you want to be or formulating your own opinions and beliefs. And I think for all young people that I've spoken to, it's a very big time for that with everything that's going on in, in politics in Australia and it's causing quite big debates um which can be positive or negative depending on the outlook of people or or how they choose to go forward with with political conversations um but I definitely think it's given me a lot of stuff to think about and what my stance is on it and what I believe in and how I want to be an active member of this society and this community and um and the things that I want to have change and, and acknowledging that I have a voice and, you know, some people are feeling frustrated that my voice isn't being heard or I'm not able to change things, but still persevering and learning and reading the news and remembering that I am an active member of this society and to be part of it, I need to um, delve in and and, um, be an active part. Yeah, for sure. And it's been incredible getting to watch you kind of grow from like, you know, early days to like now the growth has been really uncharted. And I mean, I guess that has a lot to do with as well, kind of sitting in the low points as well. I feel like those are the parts where you get the most growth out of it. Absolutely. absolutely. And it's remembering that we'll be okay. Like it's, Mm. I definitely, it's been, it's been a really big up and down year with my grandfather passing as well. And I was stuck in Sydney and that was really tricky um yeah but you know remembering that we're gonna we'll keep going because we have to this too shall pass kind of thing well yeah so so we've got to make a fucking change in this country (laughs) yeah Mm, for sure for sure um but yeah kind of going off that you know I feel like a lot of the change in society is starting to happen because a lot of young people are becoming more empowered 
and like the landscape's changing. People are sticking up, standing up for what they believe in. And we're seeing those amazing young voices come through. And that kind of, you know, I guess <laughs> aligns with, you know, more than this, which is a project created by you and your best friend. Is that correct? Nice, nice, nice yes. segue. That was good. <laughs> I know, you I just came up with that. This what is this podcast thing? <laughs> but yeah, you know, young people starting a creative kind of venture together and it's it's authentic and it's realistic and I want to kind of find out you know how this idea came about for you guys and and what was the kind of process behind it yeah so it all started in 2019 so it's been a while um mm. and I approached Luca who's trans and binary um and who's been my best friend since we were born like we could yeah. always know each other. and I was just said to them I'm so sick of seeing these stereotypes and adults playing teenagers and not only does it infrequently feel authentic it also is promoting things that aren't true or pre- mm. putting pressures on to us um that you know like having to dramatize these things that we really struggle with and australia is such an interesting place it's built on a lot of hurt and a lot of like not enough recognition and it's yeah. deeply, deeply rooted in its problems but the cultures that have also formulated from here are so fascinating and like no other place and just even that, you know, that cookie cutter Aussie, Aussie kid, <laughs> not yeah. even delving into cultures or ethnicities, but just that, you know, the recess, the hat, no play, like things like that. Or, you know, they're not like school uniforms being here. And I wanted to make something that was authentic for an Australian audience that made us feel seen and also tie into that. And this is what Luca's kind of input was, make it, <clears throat> for queer kids but the issues that the queer kids go through isn't that they're queer it's just mm. that we go through things because how yeah. are we going to reach a play and I definitely I think it's so vital so so vital to talk about the past harm that's happened and bring light to it but also if we consistently get stuck in a loop of going here's another bad thing that's happened to a gay kid here's another bad yeah. thing another bad thing we're never going to reach a place of equality so we were like okay well let's put this in the future where Yes, there's discrimination, but not in this school setting and everyone's allowed to be who they are. And the problems that they will face will be completely different. Uh, and then when we have that mindset on, we then went, okay, well, let's... Sorry, I've got something stuck in my... <laughs> it's okay. Okay, I'm back. Um, we interviewed like over 50 kids that put a call out on Instagram and said, let me interview you for this thing. Yeah. And then we interviewed everyone and said, well, what do you want to see on screen? What, what do you want? Um, what TV do you want to watch? And what stories would you like to be put out there? And anonymously, we got all of their kind of their, um, their personal stories and what they wish, wish they could see on screen. And then we kind of formulated that into the themes of what the first season would be. And then I wrote it. Um, I wrote it like a my I like to say I had a lot of Mike Lee inspiration who's a director who works a lot with the actors so even before I'd really written the script I got a bunch of actors together most of all but most of them actually who then turned into the cast yeah so we had like we were pretty lucky we got our cast really early and then I worked with them for like six months because I wanted the stuff that they go through not only is real but it's also really raw and there's a lot of serious things. We, we tackle a lot in the show. So I wanted the actors to feel as comfortable as possible and feel like they were comfortable portraying this story. Because again, I really want to start making film where actors feel comfortable doing their roles and there's absolutely no peer pressure and they feel validated and strong and, 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 um, and like it's, it's a good thing they're doing it, not that this is a harrowing role that's going to change their lives. It's a story that they want to tell and they're comfortable with. Yeah, so I wrote the entire thing like by myself in my room. Um, and um, I told my parents, my mom about it and, and my aunt who have a production company do that and they're like, hey, this is actually a really good idea. <laughs> they, we, they then put some money in and we had some other investors and we were yeah. able to kind of fund pre-production and get it and get like the ball rolling. Um, and then the ACTF hopped on board who, uh, who I did little lunch with, but this is yeah. the crazy part. So when after I finished writing the script and we were needing some funding, we were putting it out on GoFundMe, talking to people, but then my mum just posted on Instagram and went, hey guys, um, my daughter's doing, has written this show and we really want to make it. And the ACTF went, I love this, let's get it made. 
and then wow. so they fully discounted, which was just incredible and like yeah. felt made me feel so warm because I did little lunch with it's the like full circle well. kind of thing absolutely full circle and having that belief and I, I have been met with nothing like there's been challenges but from any adult I've met there has been nothing but belief and support mm. and that has been so fulfilling and so rewarding because very frequently just as a woman you're put down or not believed yeah. in nothing can't do it so having that support from everyone I've shown this project to has filled me with such self-confidence in its um validity oh. anyway I digress so then we had an intimacy coordinator which is really important to me so an intimacy coordinator's job is before a sex scene or even a kissing scene or even a makeout scene it's just you the, the director the intimacy coordinator and the two however many cast members who are performing the um intimate scene mm. And you have to, before you do anything, ask for consent for a hug and a kiss. Wow. And then you talk through the actions of what the sex scene is going to look like. Then you play it out, just miming it. And then you actually do it. And having it rehearsed like that takes away so much uncomfortability mm. or so much vulnerability because then it turns into a play. Yeah. And some people have an argument, well, how do you make it authentic? If you're a good actor, you'll fucking make it. Say, yeah. That's act in it. Yeah, exactly. But it's so important to make your cast members feel secure. And, you know, we there are sex scenes in this and there are same-sex sex scenes in this. And for a lot of the cast, this is their first time acting. And we really threw them in the deep end, but I wanted them to feel as comfortable as possible throughout the entire thing. So we had a really positive production set up and then we shot it in like five weeks, which was really quick. Uh, and it was interesting being both in front of the camera and then behind it in the writer's room and also in, in, pro in production and producing. Um, but I learned so many incredible tools and was so fantastic. Mm. Anyways, and then we finished filming like February yep. and then we've been editing it and then we got it finished. Um, so the editing process was actually really quick. Like we've edited it in a couple of months and then Paramount Plus said that they'd love to have it. So yeah. I know. Oh, far out. I was like so hyped when I saw that. Um, it's really big. So I keep forgetting that it's actually a really big deal. It is. I'm like, it's shit. like you're going through the motions of it. It's going so like, quickly. I just, I think because for so long I just wanted it to get made or I wanted yeah. it to be there. Like, mm. I was like, oh, shit, I forgot that. It's actually yeah. And, you know, kind of on that kind of theme of, you know, creating a safe space for your actors and, and everyone that was in the cast, um, you know, that was so important. And did you ever find, you know, in your acting career so far, did you find that there weren't always like kind of safe spaces for actors in, in the kind of roles that you participated in? Or were you lucky enough to have that really kind of comfortable setting? I think it's a, I think it's a bit in between. I don't, th I've never, as a woman, I've been strong enough if I'm ever uncomfortable on any set, I yeah. would say not. Um, and that's big, probably because of my home and away and lunch experience. They taught me yeah. you need to be uncomfortable, you need to be. So never know, but I have also felt like no one's listened to me when I've been mm. tired or I needed things or I, I needed more support in my performances or yeah. the way a director was directing me wasn't necessarily right for me or didn't make me feel good mm. um and reflecting on that I'm like I don't ever want an actor to feel like that just so they can continue pursuing their passion and their role that's not fair mm. I don't understand why we put all this torture around acting I think you need to work hard to produce the role you want but it doesn't it's strenuous it's full on it's it's already in itself strenuous and full on I don't know why we'd add that pressure of just like emotional turmoil exactly um so no I think I, I have been I don't even want to say lucky I've had an appropriate yeah in the 21st century acting up for you but there have been times where I felt compromised or uncomfortable and so I, I didn't want my cast to ever feel like that and they were tired you know working 12 hour days doing really strenuous emotional things but because we set up such a safe space for them they were willing and happy to continue working because they knew that no matter what they would be supported. Yeah. And, um, you know, working behind the camera as well, um, did you kind of bring a lot of your own acting advice to the cast? Did you kind of direct them in, in certain ways or give them tips and advice on how to produce the I roles? Definitely give them tips. I tried to steer clear from directing as well. Yeah. My mom was a director for three episodes and John Sheedy, who um, you won the actor award for H's for Happiness. Mm. So he was he actually is directing on home and away for a little bit. Oh, so wow. Laura, yeah. Laura would have been working with them. Yeah. Um, anyways. And so it's more world too. Um, yeah. he directed the first three and they were incredible and I 
with all of this, I need to acknowledge that I'm still learning as well. And I would never want to, if I want my show to be as good as possible. And I knew that my directing abilities would not be up to scratch. And I yeah. trusted my mum because she had done the process with me. And I loved John Sheedy's work. I think he's incredible. And so I was so happy and comfortable to let them go. And they understood my vision. They were in all the writers' rooms with me. I was dissecting and explaining the scripts to them. So I didn't need... I was, I trusted them enough. I was on set every day or most days, but I, you know, I, I know that I'm not trained as a, I also don't particularly have a passion to direct. Interestingly, yeah. I love writing and I love acting, but yeah, I don't have that eye for how it, like, it's not, yeah, that's not yeah. there. For me. And I'm really okay with that because I have yeah. some incredible directors in my family. And I, this opportunity has been a real thing for me, not like, I want there to be opportunities for everyone. I want everyone to feel like they've gained something out of this. And if I wrote, directed and starred in it, I feel like I'd be getting too big for my boots. Yeah. Well. And I don't too much. Yeah. Too much and it'd be too cocky. I wasn't, and I want this, show to, I want this show to go far. And I knew my place that I'm, I'm a good actor and I knew I could perform that role well. And I knew that I had, I had writing experience and I would be able to portray the stories of adolescence. So I was happy to do that as well. Yeah, so, and I mean, you need that kind of progression as well because, like, what else are you going to work towards? Exactly. Maybe the next project you'll be the director. Exactly. Who knows? <laughs> Everything. More goals um, and bucket list. <laughs> yeah, so that, so I was really happy to help the direct part. Like, and never, I never gave our fellow cast members acting tips because I didn't, I also wanted to feel really communal and that we're all young people yeah. making a great show for other young mm. people. But if they needed like line running or how to manage their sleep and things like that, I definitely mm. was like, yeah, drink yeah. seven coffees and don't sleep. <laughs> Amazing. Great advice. Um, so, I mean, your mom, as you said, was directing on it. Um, what was it like, you know, working with your family and your best friend, Luca? Because that would have been such an incredible experience as well for you. So I'm really interested. Yeah, to working with Luca is awesome. We work so well together. We And it's because we want to follow the same passion. We don't have creative differences because at the end of the day, we want to make a story that makes mm. adolescents and young adults feel like they're being seen and heard. And that's the baseline. Yeah, and we've had such different experiences in life in general that I will never be able to argue with their experience or unjustify it or say that like I may not understand it but the beauty in that is that I get to listen as they tell me their story and I then write it um yeah well we're here, I love my mom my mom gets my best performances out of me we just it's like it's like a I don't know we like you know that mother-daughter weirdly connected <laughs> symbiosis yeah. symbiotic relationship we're on set mom would just yeah. like make a face and I'd be like oh yeah 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 or she'd be like, yeah. <laughs> like yes for sure and we yeah. would just do it. so we worked super quickly together we were like wrap up scenes in like 10 minutes like short scenes in 10 minutes we were doing incredible stuff so yeah it was um it was awesome working with her and I also loved working with John Sheedy so it was a great experience for her. Yeah no that sounds incredible. And I was now, very tired though. It was very, very yeah tired. for sure. I yeah. mean like you know the show is so full-on as you said and, and there's so many you know really full-on topics that you deal yeah. with like sexuality you know family etc. Um, you know what was uh kind of if you could give us a description of more than this what kind of tv shows or films would you be able to parallel it with you know maybe if there's something out there that's kind of similar of course it's not going to be the same kind of thing but a little I idea guess it's kind of a mix between euphoria and um skins i guess that's mm. the best way to say it um but i like neither because it's australian and mm. not as we don't have older people playing it like euphoria and it's not as i don't know if you've seen skins but mm. i've it's heard about it. Skins in it yeah so it's not also that drastic and hectic um yeah it's like a, it's like a nice middle land but every episode follows a character so we get to see their home life and we we go into religion we go into race we go into just family dynamics in australia in general and the economic status of those and yeah and it's just it's a reminder that everyone is pretty close to their age and everyone almost everyone is their sexual orientation and everyone is their pronouns as well mm. so I really tried to ensure that everyone is there how they identify so it can feel really real which is really important to me um and a lot of and like most of the music is done by queer um musicians oh, um, yeah so we really tried to engulf a lot of things in and I wanted everyone to feel like it was an inclusive and safe space 
Yeah, and that diversity was is so beautiful to see, I think, especially even in Australian like TV and film, we don't see it all the time. Yeah. And it's not an accurate representation of, of the actual landscape. There's so much diversity here. Um, so seeing that representation is going to be so important for a lot of young, you know, viewers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. To see yourself represented regardless is just such a beautiful thing. So. I, I really hope, I really hope that everyone can find components of these characters. When we've done a, we've done screenings and when we were first releasing it, we asked opinions of like some of my sister's friends and they all said, oh my God, I see myself in her, I see myself Aww. in her. And that was really, that was really validating that yeah. I've done it. I've done it to a degree that was right, which made me feel Exactly, good. which is beautiful. And, you know, I'm really interested to know a little bit more about your character, Charlotte. Mm. Um, how is she different to the roles you played before? Because, you know, you played kind of younger roles, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not different in that respect, but I'm sure that there's a lot of kind of situations and things like that that she deals with that are very very different yes yeah, poor Charlotte she is so, <laughs> so she has she's really strong and fierce and she talks a lot about like some big stereotypes that we do have in Australia mm. um and like she's of a lower socioeconomic and is is dealing with that and then also doing school and she deals a lot with like sexuality in the sense of what it is to be a woman and find like disregarding the internalized misogyny and how she finds that or coming up against against sexist comments or yeah. shaming comments and how she deals with that and her journey and mental health and how like it goes underlooked if you don't if you're not prepared for it um and, and making decisions that making decisions in general and like having to be an like a young adult and going okay this decision may impact me this may have some consequence and making that decision to go fuck it I'm gonna do it or yeah know. Um, she was fantastic for me. It was a really big, meaty, juicy role and I loved it. Um, and I had worked with her for so long and I love her so much. She is all wonderful. She's your best friend. <laughs> yeah, but she's really, she's got some shit going on, that kid. Yeah. Um, but that was really good. It was really good to play. And I don't think we're anything similar. I think mm -hmm. I, I, I was able to bring that emotiveness just from, you know, what we talked about last time, being so heavily sexualized at such a young age and having to navigate that and people slut shaming me as soon as I hit puberty because I was more comfortable in my own femininity and yeah and you know turn, like having to realize well no actually this is the way when I'm feeling shit it's because someone else has told me that I need to feel like a slut opposed to me just being a comfortable mm. person. and yeah did I wear a tank top god forbid wow. I wear oh my god Olivia crazy <laughs> do not wear that <laughs> Dang it. So, yeah, I definitely relate to Charlotte on, on that level. Um, yeah. But aside from that, very different lives. But that's been great. It's been really mm. nice to I feel at her. And also uh, being on the writing front, I'm as emotionally connected in all of the characters as I am Charlotte, which is interesting, opposed to when you're acting, you don't give a shit about anyone else. It's yeah. all role. How can you make it the best? What's the most important part? So it's been really interesting shifting my brain from giving all of my energy to Charlotte to dispersing it with five main kids mm -hmm. and being so in love with all of them and wanting the best for all of them and yeah. wanting everyone to be okay. They're your babies, essentially. It's like your exactly. like I'd say Zali is my probably my favorite character of wow. which is interesting. Yeah. And what kind yeah. of character is Zali? So Zali's um, a really hardworking, driven girl who is gay, but that's not her, um, that's not her kind of problem. And she's like, yeah. we don't ever, that's never her issue. Again, as I was talking about before, and it's just her facing the school pressures and what it's like to have to work under the pump um, and having to manage a relationship in year 12. I have to keep it really light because I have to make it really exciting. Yeah, but yeah, you can't tell very, too much. Very intense. That. There are lots of plot twists. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm really, really proud of it. And I hope that it's... I hope it reaches people. It's really my aim for it. I really, I, I want young people to, and if they don't like it, I want them to tell me why. I want to say mm. why it resonate with you. And I, you know, if there's a season two, I want to make, I want to make sure that then you specifically feel seen because I, I'm sick of watching shows and being like, I mean, yeah, maybe <laughs> my body or that I wasn't as pretty yeah. as I kind of it. Like, I want this to make you feel like you're part. It's not, it's not looking up. It's, it's, it's looking through a window. Yeah. That. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, um, kind of touching on, you know, the importance of, I guess, for you representing, you know, the queer experience, but without kind of making that the issue. Um, you know, I think that's really important as well, because, you know, while it's really important to bring up those kind of issues, and what they face at the end of the day, 
like queer people are people as well and they have a lot of other things going on in their lives and we don't see anything else really represented no, and I think the, it's so unfair yeah, in that respect friend or the yeah. butch lesbian and that's her only role no mm. so and like you think about how inclusive in our friendship groups we are and how many queer young like I'm part of it I'm a queer yeah. girl, like so many people are yeah you know? um and so it's crazy to me that there's no kind of story about them that's not about their sexuality. Mm. When I think of my gay friends or my queer friends, I don't go, they're queer. That's not yeah. my first thought that pops into mind about yeah. my friends. Exactly. It's, it's that they're a musician. It's that they're, they're doing really well at uni. It's yeah. that they're, you know, a skateboard. Like something, you know, it's not our first thought. So I don't understand why we portray them on screen like that. Mm. But yeah. Yeah. I think it's it's amazing to, I mean, break down those stereotypes and, and focus more on their human experience and what they face. Um, but, you know, going on with that, the cast is incredible. There are some really familiar faces in the bunch, um, but also a few fresh faces. So what was it like, you know, working with this cast and w- witnessing them bring your visions to life? I just got a little bit tongue-tied there. That's okay. I thought you did it very well. It was wonderful. I had been working with them for so long already. So, mm. we, like, I knew them for about, like, five to six months before we even started shooting. We all got along like a house on fire, so that was really lovely. Mm. Um everyone stood up, like, like stepped up. So it was Luca's kind of first meaty roll on. Um, and, oh my gosh, Selena, who plays Zali, first time ever in anything. Wow. And they, oh, everyone has a crush on them who sees it. They're like, <laughs> you know how it used to be the hot boy? Yeah. It's Selena. Selena and she's the main stunning. attraction. Oh, she's, like, everyone walks out of the, like, when we had the screening, every time we had the viewing, everyone's like, who is that? <laughs> who's that girl <laughs> you no know, everyone like gets really like flustered yeah like, yeah I know um you know and Elmir who was on Mustangs and Celine who was on Mustangs as well so we had it was big Aussie and obviously Camille Ellis from Bush yeah Island. um so it was a big group we all really got along we all did the background work and again because we were all playing our fucking age we could connect with what the characters yeah. were going through so it felt authentic mm. and it felt like a classroom like we talked too much and the director would be like shut up shut up so it was awesome I had such a wonderful time um yeah yeah it was yeah with the, com- the camaraderie was great we'd all go home we'd we'd hang out afterwards we were all really close we're still really close uh, and I, we all got joined because we care so much about making it, which is also really lovely. Because it wasn't just do your acting job and then you're done and screw mm. this. It was really, uh, most of the characters had been through similar things or yeah. were really, or, sorry, most of the actors had been through famously similar things to their act characters. And so not only did they really resonate, but they also knew what they were making was really important. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I just came up with this question in my head right now. But silly of me, I just completely didn't forgot to ask, you know, what, where did the name for more than this actually come from? Like, what was kind of the idea behind it? Why was that the choice? So it wasn't the name we had originally, ironically. Mm. No one could say the old name. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> no, what was the old name? <laughs> it was Literary Lethargy. Oh, so okay. like reading, but being lethargic. So mm. literary lethargy, and like in the literature class, because they're all in an Eng- the show takes place around an English extension class. Okay. And then lethargy to be lethargic and not want to do it. And I thought that was genius. I was so proud of it. <laughs> yeah. No one could say it and be like literary lethargy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we were brainstorming, and then um, I can't remember who came up with more than this, but I enjoyed that because there's um. There's like a little bit at the end that says I'm more than just one specific thing. Like mm. there's time. So I was like, yeah, that really ties in really well. And yeah. it, you know, it is, it's, it's more that. And I, I really like more and more, I've grown to love it and enjoy it because it's, again, there's so many archetypes to it. It's more than the show. It's more than mm. a queer show about kids. It's more than one specific image. The children yeah. are more than you see them on screen. So it like ties yeah. in so like beautifully. Like that kind of. Yeah. yeah. So so like, actually, and I love it. I love it. Yeah, it's a beautiful name. Yeah. Um, so I'm glad I, I brought that up just quickly because yeah, otherwise we would have missed out on knowing literary lethargy. That is pretty oh, cool. That's the real name. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was the conceptual piece. Mm, yeah. 
So, I mean, what would you really like audiences to know before watching the show, but also what do you hope they'll take away from it? Is there something that they should know before kind of approaching it? And, you know, I mean, you've kind of spoken briefly about the fact that you really want them to resonate with the characters and and really feel what's going on. But yeah, anything else you'd like them to kind of get from it? Yeah, absolutely. So we do face some pretty serious scenes. So it is important, and there will be trigger warnings before the episodes that do determine it. And so I do want to warn that. I don't ever want, and again, it's meant to be an inclusive show and I don't ever want to shock anyone or bring up any past trauma. Um, Everything has a consequence as well. So if something bad happens, there is a consequence. So we're not just glamorizing per se self-harm and then you never talk about it again. We go through it, we explain it, we explain the effects that's having on the person. So it is a story in itself. Um, but there are some pretty serious scenes. Um, and so it's important to acknowledge that, like, and, and as a writer acknowledging that, that that may have some effect on anyone and I don't want that to impact anyone negatively. So if you are uncomfortable, I don't want you to feel that it's going to make you feel shit or bring up yeah. past trauma to anyone watching. That's not my intention at all. Um, what else? I hope that people feel seen. Yeah. I hope that they resonate with it. I hope that they feel like another young person is writing it for them and I uh, and imploring them that like yes I've had a very different upbringing like I have working full-time since so young but I'm also a teenager who exactly. a lot of this stuff is from this is from my brain and my past experiences I won't tell you what because Daily Mail will write something on it and I'll <laughs> yeah fair enough I, I have been through mm. and I am also with my own mental health I really struggle with it I struggle with panic attacks and anxieties and I have really low bouts and I was so shit at schoolwork sometimes and wouldn't get assignments in and would be, you know, I have real body dysmorphia at times. And there's a lot that I go through that we all do as young adults. And I don't want it to feel like, Oh my God, I'm going to make a concept about Australian TV and I'm going to spin on it. It's, it's an authentic thing for me as well. Mm. Um, And if that's not your story, that's so fine. I don't ever want to put my story onto anyone else, but the amount of work we've done to make it communal, I I really hope that some, that everyone finds something in it for them and know that it's okay. And I'm not, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I don't fucking know what to do. Yeah, I'm still (laughs) figuring it out, but at least you know that you're seen and we're with you and we're still all going through it. And at the same time to that, so it's okay to not to be okay, but also we can make art. You don't need to wait until someone tells you it's okay to their make art. We are such an intelligent generation and especially in Australia, we cultivate some incredible people and we don't need to wait to do something. Mm. And if you have a story to tell, you should just tell it because art shouldn't be gate kept until a certain point of knowledgeableness. Yeah. You should just make things if you believe it's true. I mean, in that same respect as well, I mean, your teenage experiences are so valid as well. And, you know, even though it's not the conventional, you know, teenage experience, the things that you've gone through, of course, are what every every teenage will have to go to to go through. So like don't put yourself down in that respect. No, no, no. I I don't. I completely am valid in my own kids. But I guess a lot of the time I'm also an other, you know. Yeah, yeah. So they've done I don't, yeah. So I don't want anyone to feel like it's a successful person profiting off other people mm. ever. And I, yeah. you know, it was hard making this show as well. That was, that was years off, but I, yeah, I'm so proud of it. And I'm so proud of Luca and the communal effort that we had was so fantastic. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I mean, you you actively were listening and learning throughout the whole journey. So, you know, I think kudos to you for that. And mm-hmm. I don't think anyone would judge you for, you know, for taking this on. It's such an important thing that needs to be out there. So, I really yeah. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, my last question for you is something that you expressed in one of your TikToks. Um, go and follow Olivia on TikTok if you're not already. It's Just not, it's me. more exciting. It's a weird play. <laughs> Because I started so doing it seriously and then I was like, oh, I actually can't do this. So yeah. now I just post really randomly really weird stuff. No, but it's fun. We love seeing that side of you. You know what's so dangerous about TikTok? You don't realise how many people see it. Do you know what I'm saying? It's, you yeah. feel like it's a diary and then I'll get like 200,000 views. I was like, oh. You're like, oh. <laughs> that's a lot of people. Like put them in a room and that's like yeah. a whole stadium. <laughs> but yeah. Um. So in that TikTok, you kind of talked about the importance of providing young people with the opportunity to create art you know was there a struggle 
I mean, making this project come to light, you did say that you were very much accepted by the people that you approached. Um, but how do you also hope to pave the way for more young talent to come? Through? I was met with a lot of no's. I was met with a lot of no, oh. this isn't something I'm interested in. And it's because mm -hmm. the risk, it's a young, it's mm -hmm. too young, like, you know, me and Luca, two young people trying to make something, which mm -hmm. is always frustrating. But I'm hoping that with this show, and I hope it does, I really hope it does well, just so all the production companies go, oh shit, we need young people making things. And it's able to yeah. open an avenue in Australia for people to be able to be part of something that they can make and that it's easy and accessible. Cause there's already no money in the industry here anyway. Yeah. So to have that opportunity, I'm really hoping that this can pave a way for people to show that you don't need to be a university grad with a bunch of degrees and have made seven short films to make something. Yeah. Um, and that if you're intelligent enough and, and the art is good enough, it can be made. So I'm hoping that that will pave an easier path for people. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think it's, I was told I was like the youngest person like documented to ever write, produce wow. and make a show in a while or in Australia, something, something like that. So yeah, it's really exciting. I think even in that, in that kind of way as well, you're paving the way for people that just want to represent experiences that they've faced as well. Absolutely. And they, and they be valid. It doesn't it's need to be true. a crazy like drug shootout, mm. sex frenanza for people exactly. to want to watch it. It can be about, cause I, yeah, I don't, we don't need to glamorize real life. It's pretty mm. hard as it is enough. Yeah, and I think it's it's so important to work in consultation with people that you're actually trying to represent the way that you have, you know, even if it's, you know, for instance, a queer story or a person of colour kind of story that you're representing, I think having those people in consultation with directors or, or the people making it or having those people. Okay. Hello again. <laughs> I have no idea where that happened, but yes, thank you so, so much. Thank you so much as well. All the best at this. I'm super excited. Go and watch it, everyone. Go yeah, and stream. March 4th. Yeah. It's like a seven day free trial, so you don't even need to pay for it. Just exactly. Go and get that. I'm not trying to take your money. I just want your mind. <laughs> just watch it and, and, and you know, just consume all Enjoy of it. the talent and everything that's in it. And let me know, like, send me a DM. I really want to know what people think. I really want to know how they feel and how it affected you and if it didn't how I could have done better as well I want this to be I want it to be a communal workspace yes. I want everyone to feel involved for sure thank you so much Olivia Thanks. yay